news. He has another news, folks. A small, a just a, small. a little small thing. Yeah, go. Us comic book people would love to say happy, happy eighty years to the Joker. Yeah, that's right. It was, uh, what was it, yesterday, Saturday, April yeah, 25th? It was, yeah. I think it was the 80th, 80th birthday of the Joker. I was like, what? 80 years? Damn. Now, yeah. in the comic books, and, and see if somebody doesn't pull this off, if they can ever get back into production with the comic books. DC, we need to talk about this, is threatening to go off the reservation, get away from Diamond Comics distributing and distribute their own books. Scott, if you're out there, I'd love to hear your take on this, but they're talking about now <laughs> Marvel going their way and DC going their way and everybody's going to leave Diamond Comics behind and you're going to have to deal with a half dozen distributors again in the comic book industry because, my God, there's just tons of money to be made in it. <laughs> What the hell was that talk? 80 years, Joker. Oh, yeah, the Joker. Okay. <laughs> if, if, if all our, all our little, all our little princes and princesses and stuff all around the country pull their heads out of their ass long enough to let people get back to business in this country, maybe, maybe we could do a nice big Joker story to celebrate his 80th anniversary cause. We had a plot line a little while back in Detective Comics. There are three Jokers. Okay, you got the maniacal one who does the fish. You got the, the really nasty one like you saw in the movies with uh, Heath Ledger, I think it was. His, his style where he's just a terrorist, basically. And then you have the, the keen intellectual who, who likes to psychologically torture people. So there's three of them. What if it's been a franchise and the eight and the Joker from 1940 is still alive, and he's the one who decides who gets the franchise? Huh. You so all these potential Jokers have to fight it out to the death in front of the original Joker, so they can be the new Joker. So you're so let's say we have uh, well Cesar I mean, Romero yeah. playing like a Godfather Joker, and he has a bunch of these younger Jokers. Well, that's just it. Cesar Romero is still too young to be the original Joker. It would have to be, you'd have to be older than that. We're talking like Emperor Palpatine style, dusty old guy. But he's got to sit there and, man, he's, this one is, he looks like the original Joker. The very first one from 1940. Mm. The Man Who Laughs. Oh, God, that was creepy. That, <laughs> God bless it, love it so much. But, uh, Which, now, Turner Classic Movies actually had a movie that kind of related to the development of the Joker, because there was two, two movies that, that formed the foundation. Both of them had Conrad Veidt in it, because I'm, not a lot of people know this. The Joker is based on Conrad Veidt. Yeah. Okay. Not a whole lot of people know who he is because he, he's not one of those big legendary actors. But he's one of those guys who, who shows up. He was in uh, one called The Man Who Laughs. And there's another one. And just watched it last week on Turner Classic Movies. Can't remember what it I is. Don't but, know. Oh, my goodness. I don't know nothing about the other movie. I know that but. the Joker did get, get a lot from The Man Who Laughs. Mm -hmm. Which, I'm sorry, but... Black and white and having that guy smile, that is really creepy. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And the movie's not even scary. And and that's, yeah, that's just it. Because it, 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 was it was, didn't try to be a scary movie. It was trying to make a, it was trying to hit you right in the gut. And a lot of people dismiss anything that was made before, <laughs> before they were born, pretty much. So you got a bunch of young bucks running around. They'll dismiss anything from... Made before 2000 or 1995, that's old. So I don't need to hear none of that. What y'all don't realize, again, we're back to our roots. Everything builds on what came before. And if you don't learn what came before, you're like way over here and on your own little sand pile, and it's going to come falling down on you every time you try to 
every time you, you build up your little sand pile, you're going to have your little sand castle and everything up. You go to put this great big flag on it where you're going to build your franchise. You put it on top of that sand castle and poof, it all falls apart because you didn't realize that 60, 70, 80 years ago, somebody put a great big rock right next to you that's just solid as the Rock of Gibraltar that you could have built your castle on and planted your flag and just made money for years and years flying your franchise flag, but you couldn't be bothered to learn what came before you. So, anywho. So, who, who of all the history of the Jokers, who's your favorite? <laughs> Honestly, I can't say I have a favorite Joker because I do appreciate all the Jokers in their own way. I will say this, okay? I'll say this. The appeal of superhero movies is typically not with the hero, it's with the villain. No. The, you have to have a really good villain in order for the hero to thrive. Okay? Right. Got to challenge the hero, got to go through the whole journey, all that stuff. Okay? Look at what we have gone through over the last 1990 to now is 31 years, 1989, with Tim Burton's first Batman movie with Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson. Okay? Batman, that was the start of Batman wearing armor. That was the start of Batman driving a tank. That was the start of Batman having all these cool toys. All these wonderful toys. And it just got worse and worse and worse. With every passing movie, the tank got bigger. The armor got bigger. The acting got more wooden. But the Joker, if you'll notice, Joker doesn't wear armor. Now, Joker actually drove a tank in Bat 1989's Batman, I believe, but it was I think it was disguised as a birthday cake. Don't ask. <coughs> Rona. Anyway, the uh, <coughs> Rona. Anyway, Rona, Rona. But anyway, the uh, the Joker never wears armor. The Joker doesn't doesn't need armor. He doesn't need the tanks. He doesn't need all those wonderful toys. The Joker, and yet the Joker does just fine. The Joker pulls out a gun with a barrel about that long, but that's all he needs. I mean, Batman's got, like, nuclear missiles on his bat jet or whatever, <laughs> and Jack Nicholson goes up, boom, shoots it down like a flying rat, takes him down, and, and all he's got on is a little purple dinner jacket with a little string tie on it. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would have to say, like, Jack Nicholson's and Heath Ledger's, they have planning. Each one has their own thing, okay? Because, all right, let's start. Who is our last Joker? Uh, Jacqueline Phoenix. Joaquin Joker. Phoenix. Okay, Joaquin that Phoenix. Was, well, and that was in the, the Joker movie. Yeah. He brought his own style to it, okay? Yeah. He's, the, he's the everyman who's been beaten down so much he can't. He just breaks. When he shatters, he puts himself back together. He's not supposed to put himself back together. When he shatters, he's supposed to stay shattered and broken. He's not supposed to come back. He does anyway, and he puts himself back into this weird, off-kilter mirror image of what he used to be, and all of a sudden we've got the Joker. Go back before that. you got uh, yeah, Jared Leto, that one. And he brought in his the little pimp. mincing, prancing he brought Joker. brought in the pimp Joker. Which, to be honest, would be exactly what the Joker would do if he knew it would irritate you. If you're Batman, he wants to, and the Joker's going to irritate you, and you're a big macho guy, and he comes in mincing and prancing like this. Well, now he was in, uh, which ones was he in? He was in Suicide Squad. Yeah. And let's face it, who was the protagonist there? Who was your main male protagonist? Let's put it that way. Male protagonist? Mm hmm. Give me a hint, it wasn't Rick Flagg. Was probably Deadshot. Will Smith? Oh, yeah, that's right. He did go after Batman a lot and even mm -hmm. had a vision of him killing Batman. Yep. So, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, the joke, that would be competition for the Joker, right? 
Yeah, but the Joker didn't do much in that movie except no, because, for I'm a pimp. That's my girl over there. Uh-huh. I want to do anything I want just to make sure my girl's happy. Now, That's about it. Now, I mentioned the male protagonist, him mincing and prancing and pimping and stuff, would get under Deadshot's last nerve, get under Will Smith's last nerve, got under your last nerve, got under my last nerve. Anyway. But who would be irritated even more than we would be with somebody pimping out Harley Quinn? Every female who watched that movie. There's three of them, but still. He was there to tick to make the feminists mad. This was supposed to be the feminist anthem. Well, yeah, he should have done movie. that a long time ago if they know their stuff because he used to beat up Harley all the time. Yes. Yeah. Which so. would... Come on. <laughs> Follow through. Would that have not been a better story for the Joker than what you got in Suicide Squad? Why would they put Joker in Suicide Squad? Why did they put him in there? Why did they put Harley Quinn in there for that matter? So people would pay attention to it. Because they couldn't put Batman in it. Batman was busy with some, some other franchise to ruin. Justice League, to be honest. But So, they had to have something there. It's got to have the bat in it or it just ain't shit. So, since Batman was not available, let's, hey, we'll put Harley Quinn in. She'll be a part of the Suicide Squad. That'll be awesome. But, oh, do people really know who Harley Quinn is? And, She's supposed to be a villain. Everybody's supposed to boo the villain. But we don't want him to boo Harley Quinn because we want her to do Birds of Prey the next year. So, hey, let's bring the Joker in and let's make the Joker really, really nasty. And we're going to make him exactly what we don't like, which would be a pimp. So, so anyway. But that's all they did to him. They didn't actually make him likable or dislikable. It was just like... No, he was just there. It was weirdo. Which is called stunt casting. You bring in, you either bring in a star that has no impact on anything, or you bring in a character that has and, no impact on anything. The Joker was stunt cast. What really got me, though, was the stories that you heard behind the scenes. Because I know some actors, they have to get into their characters and stuff like that. Jared Leto tried to act like the Joker by sending, like, uh, Margot Robbie, who played Harley Quinn, like, dead. I think it was a dead rat. Because that's what the Joker would do. No, he wouldn't. Well, what? What I mean? What makes seriously? What sense does that actually make? Sending you a dead rat. No, the Joker would send Harley Quinn a bouquet of dead fish with big old Joker smiles on them. Yeah, that's what that, the Joker would do. Yeah, that with would li- be with some. lipstick on the outside of the fish's mouth. That's that what would be would some, do. but not a dead rat. Like anyway. that makes no sense at all. We are, we you. Went and distracted me. Let me get back to the main point. Everybody brings the Joker is the reason Joker's been around for eighty years is because actors can chew as much scenery as they want with it. That could be a lot of scenery, like Jack Nicholson and Cesar Romero did. It could be a little scenery, like Jer, uh, shoot, Joaquin Phoenix did. It, wasn't he the Joker? Or am I missing something? I missed something. He the was Dark the Joker, Knight. but the whole no. Oh. Uh, that was Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. Okay. I keep... All you dead young people keep throwing me off. Okay. Oh, so, don't say that. You're welcome. Heath Ledger was awesome. That should smack you. A bunch of people are going to smack you no. for that. He was awesome. Heath he was Ledger. Amazing. Heath Ledger as the Joker was awesome and amazing. Heath Ledger was an idiot. And I can prove it. Is he alive today? No. Should he be alive today? <sighs> yes! If the fact that he, and he died from what? What did he die from? What was it? It was an accidental overdose. There you go. It wasn't an accidental overdose. He took drugs. He overdosed. There's no such thing as an accidental overdose. There is an eventual overdose. Screw Heath Ledger. Screw his old junky ways. Because he has no idea how many people actually liked him and liked his work and liked him. Him as an actor and as a human being, and he just pissed all over it and threw it away because he needed some smack in his veins. That's not what actually happened. Well, what happened? He had, he went to the doctor and he 
got some medicine because he was having trouble sleeping with mm -hmm. uh, acne or ac whatever that sleeping disorder is. Mm -hmm. And he accidentally took uh, another pill that wasn't supposed to be like mixed with this type mm -hmm. and it caused him to have an overdose. He didn't actually, okay. wasn't a drug addict. So it was actually a bad interaction. Yes. So he didn't, he doesn't, he didn't pump a bunch of smack in his. No. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say. Back like, to it. Mm, Back to it. <laughs> anyway, still, screw <laughs> Heath Ledger. On general purposes, anyway, screw him. He's, he's dead. He's not going to defend himself. Anyway. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're going to bury us. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but moving back, Jack Nicholson. I do the editing. I'll get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Stepping back to Jack Nicholson, the reason he's laughing right now is because I cut out this whole deal <laughs> I did on Heath Ledger because... I was just like, oh. Anyway, moving back to it. I just went ahead and buried myself all over again. <laughs> Going back to Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Going back to Jack Nicholson, he, uh, he brought his own scenery chewing to it and Cesar Romero did the same thing he ate the scenery all of these guys put their own thumbprints on the Joker just like Adam West and uh, everybody else who ever, who's ever played the Batman has left their own fingerprints on it some were good some were bad and some were Jared Leto but either way <laughs> happy 80th birthday Joker <laughs> God, I hope you get sick on one of your Joker fish. Anyway, you got anything else? <laughs> well, Joker fish? We are not supposed to be rooting for the bad guys, remember? I won't talk about Joker fish for now and forever. My God, because that was a hilarious not... concept. That was a concept only the early 70s and a lot of drugs could have come up with. <laughs> I got to admit, I did like season Romero, but I... I... Is it Caesar? Caesar Romero. Caesar Romero. Caesar Romero. Yes. I liked him. And if you've watched, uh, if you've ever watched Mystery Science Theater three thousand, the one about the rock climbing, have you ever seen that one? I can't remember the title right now, but that it starred Caesar Romero and uh, Beaver Cleaver's dad climbing a mountain, and nearly drove the bots insane because it was constant. I'm, and this is not a joke. Ten solid minutes of guys climbing a mountain set. <laughs> and not very well. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway, Cesar Romero, just one of those guys. And to be honest, I'm always going to love him for the way he portrayed the Joker because he was the one who just sat there and had zero F's to give. He just enjoyed himself. He would have painted over his mustache. Painted over his mustache because he didn't want to get rid of his mustache because it's <laughs> Cesar Romero's mustache. You do not stand on Superman's cape. You don't spit into the wind. You don't pull the mask off the lone, lone, old Lone Ranger and you do not shave Cesar Romero's mustache. You don't. Wow. He, he's been, I don't know how long he's been in the ground, but you still don't touch his mustache. China, China is asshole.